Okay, so I thought I'd offer a couple of tips on how to approach a couple of the tricky parts in this solo because um, it gave me a bit of trouble when I first tried to learn it and also play it. Um, so first things first, the main kind of hard fast lick. I think the best way to kind of get over this is to actually ingrain into your head the rhythm of the notes here. Um, slowed down actually sounds deceivingly more simple than what it is sped up. Well, it does to me anyway. So slowed right down, this first lick is something like this. Now when I first tried to learn this solo years and years ago, I heard that it's four notes of equal length, when actually it's two notes of one length and then the next two are of um, half length basically. So once you get that into your head and you start building up to speed, you want to think about how to pick it. Now John Norham, I'm not sure, but my inkling is that he just picks the first two notes and does a hammer on um, for the next two, hammer on pull off. So he does something like this. Now when I found it, and I was trying to get this up to speed, I couldn't get that kind of rhythm with just doing a hammer on pull off. So I had to implement a, an upstroke for that last, um, the 14th fret of the E string, that second last note. So you might find you're able to do the hammer on pull off for that rhythm, um, I think that's more accurate. Uh, but even though I can kind of do that now, I still feel more comfortable doing the upstroke for the third note and I found that helped me build up the rhythm anyway. Now when you are playing this up to speed, those first two notes I find it's best to pick in a sweeping motion. Now, I'll just quickly highlight um, what I'm doing here. So normal guitar picking, upstroke and downstroke, you're perpendicular to the guitar. The way to do this sweep, you want to angle your pick such that an upstroke comes away from the guitar body and a downstroke goes into the guitar body. So if you want to practice this, you can just go over each string and just like put enough pressure on so that you pass the string but the next string stops you basically. So you do something like this. And this kind of helps get into the, the sweep in motion. So if I was just to play the the sweep of, of what I'm doing when I'm actually playing the solo, I do something like this. And at first it feels very hard to do, but once you get into that rhythm and you get the muscle memory built up, it, it becomes a bit more natural. And um, just looking at the camera, it seems as though I'm using more of my thumb to kind of push it rather than like wrist or um, arm action. And I think I am doing that, yeah, it feels more like a thumb technique, whereas normally if I was doing the kind of alternate picking, um, it'd be more of like a wrist and arm action. So another tip there. So kind of up to speed, um, it should be something like this once you get it under your belt. And once you get that last shape, you end on the uh, 19th fret, or sorry, 17th fret of the E, you don't have to come back down. That's another little rhythm change that might help you out. Um, but when you're playing this, it's very, very easy to rush it, to kind of rush that lick, you know. I was finding that when I was practicing it and starting slow and building up, I seemed to feel okay, but as soon as I started playing with the actual track, um, for some reason it was making me rush and I was getting out of sync and then because I was out of sync I was thinking oh no I'm not playing fast enough to get back in sync but what I found was actually relaxing a little bit and just focusing on playing it in that proper rhythm is what got me back into the actual synchronization and like I say it's kind of de an, a, a deceiving effect of, of playing something which sounds faster than what it is. So what I'll do is I'll maybe go through the rest of the solo at a moderate pace before I go on to the, um, the next main lick I want to point out. But like at a slow moderate pace you should be doing something like this. Okay, now um, the little lick after that, I think it's mostly self-explanatory, but I should maybe offer a couple of tips on finger positions because um, there's a little sequence of notes in here. Uh, it goes something like this. 
Let me play the full thing to get into speed. Yeah, this little sequence here. You want to have your first finger kind of on the 7th fret. Use your 2nd finger for the ninth fret, 3rd finger for the 10th fret. This is going to help you do this little lick here, which goes from um, the 7th of the E string. And when you hit that 9th of the B, beforehand I was wanting to come off to the 7th of the B, and I found I was just losing my place. But what he actually does, John, is he comes to the the tenth of the G after the um, ninth of the B. And in order to do that, you need to use your um, second finger for the ninth, and then third finger for the tenth. Then luckily, you get a little rest after that, because I used to find that it kind of offset my rhythm trying to do that. So when you hit that seventh of the B again, there's a little break, and then you do that little blues lick. And you're back into the solo again with the kind of the tricky part. Okay, so I hope those tips have helped. Um, if there's any queries or anything that needs to explain a bit more, then just let me know and I'll try and help out as best I can.